Hi guys, welcome to the next long overdue edition of On The Bench. It's been a while. Today we have my buddy Carl's uh, jazz bass. And this bass has a long history uh, with him and my band actually because I met Carl when he joined uh, my old band Orphic. And I remember him playing this bass on stage a lot. It's a super cool axe. I've always loved it. This bridge used to be black, you know, it's all worn down. So this is was his uh, his beater bass, you know. This is the one that was meant to do a job and did it well. So it's got active EMGs in it, and one issue this bass has always had has been battery clearance for the uh, battery you see stuck under there. And so we were thinking about ideas. You know, the first thought, of course, is to route the back, route the cavity a little farther. But this body's fairly thin, and if I were to take off any more of that on the back you'd risk cracking it right there or possibly even going through while I'm working on it also we thought about maybe putting a battery compartment in the back so removing all the wood but putting a compartment there so then you could just pop that out to change the battery which would be cool but we thought of something else that I think is a little bit cooler he was asking me we were looking at different bases online and he suggested uh, putting the input jack down here the output jack down here on the bottom, like uh, I can't remember the name of the custom one of the custom bases we were looking at, but so yeah, we could totally do that, and then we'd have this vacant hole here. So he asked, you know, what kind of electronics could we put there? Well, I said you could have two volume, two tone, you know, independent volume, independent tone. He's like, nah, do something cooler than that. So we came up with an idea: throw a kill switch in it. Kill switch. So it'll be kill switch right there. And then we will have the input jack down here at the bottom of the base. So just a, a quick tip, when you put one of these on the bottom of your, your base, you don't want it right here. I mean, it would be easiest right here because that's where the cavity is. But then you weaken that area a little too much, so move it over just a little bit. And then we'll drill in that way, drill in that way to make room for the jack. Should be good. And then once we have this little button in there, I can flatten that out. And as you'll see, there's a lot more room for the battery underneath there. So that'll be pretty neat. And then you can play, you know, bucket head style bass licks, right? So I think the first thing I'm going to do, mark out where we want to put the new jack, and then start drilling. So I went ahead and put a couple of screws in to hold the jack plate flush against the, uh, well, not flush, but against the side of the body, so that I could go ahead and drill my center hole for where I want my jack to be. So this is going to be the guide hole. While I have the jack plate on there, I'm going to go ahead and drill my next hole up, which is a Brad Point bit, in case you were wondering. That should probably be deep enough. All right, so we've pretty much got our hole drilled. Uh, probably going to chisel a little bit in there just to make some clearance. But more importantly, I would like to uh, draw your attention to Coconut, who's being exceptionally cute. <laughs> All right, that's enough coconut for now. Probably can't see, but I can illustrate. I've already drilled the hole into the cavity to run our wires through. And uh, we should be able to get four wires through there. So, because we're going to need... Uh, two wires going to the output jack like normal, but you're also going to need two wires coming back from the kill switch to wire up the kill switch the way I do, which is making, uh, when you press the button down, it turns the switch on, which creates a direct short across the lugs of the output jack. And that's just the way I find it to be as, uh, it makes it as silent as possible. Yeah, you can kind of see the hole down in there. Okay, so for illustrative purposes, I have taped down our momentary switch, which if I hadn't said it before, that's what that is. It's a uh, momentary uh, off, on, off. So when you press the button, it's on. Um, I did one side. I waited a minute, let it cool down, because this is a plastic case around this button. We don't want to melt it. And now I'm going to do the other side and 
Just gonna start with some solder already on the tip of my gun. Drop some on the lug and back off. Let that cool for a second and then uh, attaching the wires should be pretty quick. You just need one hot and one ground and you need to get rid of coconut. Back up buddy. Okay, now we've got that wired up, now we move on to the jack. Alright, so because we have active pickups, we have a stereo jack because you have to have the battery wire running. That's going to go back on the jack exactly like it is. The ground and the output from the tone uh, right here, we're going to extend those and those are the two that we're going to bridge when we put our button in. And this uh, little card here is just to protect the base. It's not some tone card for soldering. So one interesting fact I noticed was that the ground from the pot had come off over here. And I can't help but wonder if that was maybe tapping onto this causing the problem he was having with his volume cutting out. So we will make sure we resolder that down before we close it all up. So what's next is this hole that we have that was an input jack hole is now too small for the kill switch. So we have to widen that and to do that I'm just gonna go with my trusty reamer. Which you guys have seen on the channel several times. It does one job but it sure does it well. You just take it and go slow and this is you know these jack plates are not made of any kind of super strong metal it's just a soft kind of metal so you work your way through and eventually it'll be to the right size all right so i got tired of uh dealing with this on the guitar so i just unhooked the pickups basically so that's a mighty big hole now i could have gone with a smaller button but this being a bass i thought a small button would look kind of dumb check out how this one looks though Fits perfectly. And it looks pretty cool. Okay, we've got our jack and our new plate here. And now we're going to wire up everything to run the actual input jack first. So we need to run to tip, which is going to be this guy. We need to run our hot lead, which in this case is going to be this red wire here. And then our ground, which goes to sleeve, is going to be this top guy right here. And that's going to be the white wire. The first white wire, because remember there's going to be two here in a second. And then when you're running active pickups, you got to have somewhere for your voltage to drain. So that is what this wire is, and that goes to the ring, which is going to be on this side because it's a stereo jack if you remember. That will be the only thing wired to this lug. Okay, so now I have to tin the leads for the switch. I'm gonna go ahead and run those through our little hole first. So that way, everything is nice and tidy and I can reach everything. When you wire up your kill switch in this manner, the only thing the switch is is a short, so it doesn't matter uh, which direction they go. So you could have gone white to red or red to white, it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, but I went ahead and matched the wires just to make it you know, a little more tidy for my purposes. One thing I am worried about now is with all these wires in here, did I leave enough space in the cavity? So let us find out. I have to try to slowly pull these wires back. Alright, may have to make some more space. Okay, it took a bit of doing, but we got our jack in place. There was a little tiny ledge I hadn't chiseled it off. <laughs> chiseled it off. So I did that, and uh, now I'm going to wire up this guy just like it should. Standard jazz bass wiring. And uh, we should be good to test it out, so... If you are familiar with how to wire a jazz bass, 
then uh, you'll know what I'm going to do, which is not difficult. Uh, basically, got my neck volume, my neck pickup, boom and boom, right there. Got my bridge pickup, boom and boomed right there. And uh, then we're going to wire these wires in place of our ground and our hot lead out. So pretty, pretty simple stuff. Got the base all completed here. Love this bass, and it's pretty cool that uh, once again I get to be part of taking it somewhere new. If we play the notes on the clean setting, so you can see the switch works. Every kill switch is going to have a little bit of a pop to it, some are worse than others. Uh, this one, I tried to put a 2.2 meg resistor across the uh, blades of the switch to try to mitigate some of that pop, but you got to remember, anytime you're snapping off electricity, it's going to arc, and that arc makes a noise. But when you play distorted, it's not something you notice. That's why uh, most of the time, kill switches are used on distorted guitars for cool stuttery effects. kill switches that often. Anyway, you get the point. <clears throat> Pretty cool having a kill switch on a base. I'm going to clean this thing up, get it back to Carl. I'm sure he'll be stoked about it. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.